my name is Francois Rose, and uh, thank you so much, Professor Benchou, for inviting us to, to make uh, this uh, uh, presentation on, on an overview on our Gagaku research. I really, I really appreciate and I'm excited to be here, so thank yeah, you so much. Too. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, um, so the, the, the presentation, or the summary, is called Our Orchestrating Time, The Changing Color of Gagaku Music. And I refer to it as our research because I was really fortunate to be able to work on this uh, as a collaborative project. So I worked on this project with uh, Jarek Kapuscinski from Stanford University and with uh, the uh, Tokyo-based Gagaku Ensemble, Rei Gakusha. Before starting, I have to make two clarifications. I think it is important for you to know that it is as composers that we have approached this project. Not only composer, composer educated in the West. And closer to the end of my presentation, I will get back to, to that point. Also, you're going to hear me talk about Japanese music, the concept of time in Japanese music. I have a favor to ask you. Could you please, every time you hear me say Japanese music, replace that with Kengen music. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Kengen music is a subgenre of uh, gagaku music, a music that was exclusively instrumental, that was played and is still played at the imperial court. And so, uh, um, and they are, I have to tell you two aspects that have really triggered our, our curiosity as composer when we approach that topic, and that is its extreme slowness for a Western composer, and the emphasis it puts on timbre. And this is my topic. I'm gonna to talk about time and timbre in Kengen music. Since I'm gonna talk about time, we felt that we should start at least with a reference to the Western concept of time so that we could at least have a point of comparison when I will get into the Japanese concept of time. So I'm starting with the Western concept of time, which is said to be directional. In the Western concept of time, there are two notions that are very, very clear. It's the past, where we came from, and the future, where we are aiming. But there is one notion that we have a real hard time to position, and that's the present. In fact, it is so hard to, to, to position that we usually agree that the present is kind of somewhere between the past and the, uh, and the future. Now, when we translate this conceptualization of time to music, we get the notion of motion. There needs to be a displacement from the past towards the, the future. And to do this, there needs to be an attraction. There needs to be a magnet that will pull and that will call for a displacement. And this is usually the role of the climax. The Japanese concept of time is said to be circular, and it is very often just represented like that with a circle. Now there is one notion which is like, no doubt, where is the present? The present is the point of focus of this way of conceptualizing time. But try to imagine where do the past and, and future fit in that representation. We usually agree that they are merged into the notion of eternity. Now when we transpose this uh, uh, conceptualization of time to music, we get the absence of uh, emotion so that they can be the focus on the, uh, on the present. But absence of uh, 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 climax is not absent of motion, calls for an absence of climax, uh, because the climax is what creates that motion. But absence of climax in itself is not enough. There is another point that is very important to avoid motion, and this is to avoid having any hierarchy. Hierarchy. Do you understand this word? Hierarchy. Hierarchy. I practiced it, guys. I played it and I played it on the web, but ah, it came out this way. So uh, we, we, to avoid to have any hierarchy, listen, if you have a, a weak texture and it's developing towards a, a complex texture, there will be a magnet and there will be motion. Once you get to a complex texture coming from a weak one, we anticipate, we expect follow a, a, a weaker one. And then there is a wave that again creates motion. And so the, the reason to avoid that is there is a leveling out of all the, the musical texture. And what we get is a regular continuum that gives an impression of stillness and slowness. <coughs> now, since I'm going to, uh, my goal is to correlate time and timbre in gagaku music, I need to uh, develop this simplistic now uh, representation of the Japanese concept of time. And to do that, I'm going to refer to three very important cultural and aesthetical notions that helps define time in Japanese culture. And they are, you heard about them yesterday, Ma, Naru, and Joaku. When it comes to uh, uh, music, Ma refers to the time between the, the, the musical events. But more importantly, Ma tells us that the time between events is as important as the time of the events themselves. And as such, Ma has an, an element of depth to the Japanese concept of time. Because according to Ma, 
what we do not hear is as important as what we do hear. Naru is at the heart of the traditional Jap Japanese cosmology. Naru reminds us that every being, everything is in continuous evolution, without a definite beginning, without a, big, a definite end. And this is quite important, because Naru tells us that the notion of past and future are very much integrated in the Japanese concept of time, but they are not a point of departure and a point of arrival as they are in the Western concept of time. And so Naru is important because Naru had motion to the Japanese concept of time. Because according to Naru, the present it, it is not a fixed and standstill moment, but the present is made of a continuous sequence of moments. Joaquim. Joaquim is a primary and ubiquitous uh, principle of formal organization in Japanese culture. It can be translated as Jo slow introduction, ha, um, accelerated development, Q, fast conclusion. Now, in music, it is used on many, many le levels of time organization. If you go to a Gagaku concert, they will have used Joaku, jo Joaku to determine the order of the pieces in the program, from the slowest to the fastest. You can perceive uh, Joaku when you listen to a piece of Gagaku. It's, just, it's subtle, but if you practice, you, you will, you will uh, recognize the very gradual accelerando of the tempo while the piece is being performed. You can also perform, per perceive uh, joaku even in a phrase in gagaku music. The kakko, one of the, the, the percussion to add a drum, will always calculate or control the accelerando that leads to the most important uh, uh, downbeat in the, in the music. So, we needed to modify one last time. I represented the Japanese concept of time so that it takes into consideration Ma, Naru, and Joaku. I will now summarize the concept of time in Japanese music. So, we see that the concept of time in Japanese music is circular, and it presents a dichotomy. <coughs> because the fact that it uh, puts the emphasis on the present eliminates the idea of motion. So there is an element of standstill that is implied in, in, in itself. On the other hand, thanks to Ma, Naru, and Joaquim, the temporal fabric of each moment is quite dynamic and multidimensional. Now, as a composer, you can imagine our excitement when we begin to look at timbre in uh, 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 Kangan music, and we find the exact same dichotomy. There is, at the overall aspect, very, very static, but its inner structure, extremely, extremely dynamic. And I would like not to explain what it is that we think is responsible for the static aspect and dynamic aspect of the music. I will start with static. Kengen music is perceived as being static because its orchestral function are fixed. That is to say, regardless of the piece you're going to hear, you know the two instruments you will play the melody, the, the flute and the, uh, and the oboe. That's it. You know that the three percussion instruments will work together to create one macro rhythm. And you know that the two string instruments and the remaining woodwind instruments, the show, will provide harmonic structure that goes between the. It is always, always like that. So there, there is a, uh, no anticipation. We know what is coming. I would like to, I don't know if, I, if I'm talking to a musician, but if I am, maybe you will appreciate that. I would like now to put this in context by referring to one of the classic pieces of Gagaku, which is Etan Raku. And I'm showing you here the B section. Uh, section B of, uh, of the piece. And please, uh, if you look at my slide, you will see there are the three Ichiriki and the three Ryuteki. Together, these two instruments will always present the melody. Now, I'm going to take the other extreme, the three percussion instruments. There is a shoko, a little gong. Its function is to articulate the downbeat of every measure. Kakko is the one that double uh, two at the drum and it controls the accelerando, accelerando that will get to that Main, main downbeat, and we have the suspended bass drum, the taiko, that its function is to articulate the most important downbeat in the phrase. And so we have these two extremes, and between them we have the two biwas, the two koto, and the three sho that provides the harmonic structure that connects the, the pulsated points to its melodic tone. I would like to put this uh, uh, in, into context. I'm showing you here the form for Etan Raku. 
A tenraku is composed of three sections, A, B, and C. We hear section A and B four times, and we hear section C twice. Here is the orchestration I just shown you. It is, and that's section B. Of two of the three remaining B section, it is exactly, exactly the same orchestration. The last B section is uh, used as a coda, a conclusion, and here it's the fade out, the way that the instruments fade out, which is prescribed, and I will not explain it uh, today. Okay, three of the four A section have the exact same orchestration that I have just shown you. The very first one is used as an, as an introduction, and here it's the order that the instruments fade in, which is prescribed, and I will not, uh, I will not go over. <laughs> and finally, the two C, section C have the exact same orchestration that I've just shown you two seconds ago. Now, you need to know that in this music, there is no tradition of melodic, rhythmic, harmonic, dynamic, or orchestral variation. So, the section B that I've shown you, this is exactly the same way that it's going to be repeated. Essentially, the absence of changes creates what we call in, in composition a monochromic uh, uh, color or a monochromic music, okay, one single color. In psychoacoustic, we say that monochromic music has a high degree of predictability. That means that as a listener, when you are sitting in a concert hall and this music is being performed, you know what is to come. If you know what is to come, that neutralizes any forward motion uh, uh, forces and essentially keep the, the focus on the present and but on the other hand creates an impression of slowness of stillness. I would like now to explain why this music is also at the same time dynamic and I will refer to three different aspects to talk about dynamism in the in, in uh, Kengen music and it comes from the fact that the eight instrument of the orchestra never merge into a single sound. At all time, you are able to hear eight different layers of, of music. And the reason, I'll make a confession. You know that in the West, a good orchestration, instruments will merge. Like you don't know, you cannot say what the clarinet is playing, what the flute is playing, it's all merged together. First time I heard Gagaku, I thought, oh my God, what a bad orchestrator. <laughs> because you know, I can hear all instruments but it's because now I know, I, I, when I understood, oh my God, then I wanted to study it. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm going to refer to three things that are responsible for this thing that they cannot merge. It has to do with the separation of registers. It has to do with the acoustical property of the instruments. It has to do, it has to do with the rhythmic technique of heterophony. I'm going to take them one by one. In orchestration, there is a very basic rule. If you have two different choirs, like woodwind and string, and if you separate them in register, they will never be able to merge. And this is exactly what we have in the Kengen Orchestra. The lowest instruments of the orchestra is the biwa. The next most uh, lowest uh, instrument is the koto, and its registral space is one octave above the, the biwa. And so the two string instruments occupy the lower range of the orchestra. The lowest woodwind instrument is the ichiriki, and its range is one octave higher than the koto. The ryutoki is an octave with the ichiriki. So if the ichiriki is here, the ryutoki is there. So an octave higher is the ryutoki. Position of a show, show is here. So the show usually, the structure of the show is exactly between the, the, the ichiriki and the ryutoki. Uh, so this is the show. And here's the separation that I was talking about. In this music, you have the woodwind instruments that occupy the higher range. You have the string instruments that occupy the lower range. In Western, to solve the problem, I'm going to take another instrument that is going to join these instruments. But in, in Kangen, we don't have other instruments. Only percussion, but percussion do not have pitch. They cannot help. So at all time, you will always be able to hear the woodwinds separate from the, the strings. So now, though, you take a look at that and you say, but the woodwind instrument you know, like they play in octave, we should be able to, they should be able to merge. And here is the acoustical property of the instruments that makes it quite difficult. And I would like to talk about the acoustical property of the ryutoki and the ichiriki. To do that, there are two things when we do acoustical research that is important. The attack, the impetus, and then the sustained part once you have started the sound. There is a very big basic rule of acoustic. If you want instruments to meld together, they need to have the same type of attack. For example, in Western orchestra, the strings. If I want the strings to, I can go and bow. But 
if I bow half of the string and I pit the other half of the strings, they will separate. In the, 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 the Kangen Orchestra, the three woodwind instruments have three different types of embouchure and it creates three different types of attack. Ichiriki has a double reed instrument. The Ryutuki player blows across the hall and finally, as the picture shows, the show player uh, uh, has his or her lips uh, across the, the chamber to which the, the, the bamboo pipes are attached. So we have three different types of embouchure and we are going to have three different types of attack that will help us separate those three instruments. Okay, but once they have, they have played, I would like now to address why the Ichiriki and the Ryutuki who are in octave still have difficulty to, to merge. And so to do this, what we have done is uh, we have recorded the instruments and we have used the computer like a microscope to analyze the sound of the, and this is what I'm showing you here. So I'm gonna first compare in blue uh, Western flute with in red the Ryutuki. So uh, they are playing both of them a D sharp six. This is the two ledger line uh, D sharp above the, the treble clef. Now the, uh, ah, I should maybe Fiona, I don't know if, so. Uh, do you see, this is energy, and here on the x-axis, this is the partial. And the peaks corresponds to the partial. The black line is the threshold of hearing. Anything which is above the black line, we hear. Anything which is below the black line, we do not hear. So what is important to look at here is look at the flute, the blue one. Our, the, the peaks are relatively thin. And it, gives the, it, it suggests a sound that will be quite kind of focused. I would like you to compare with the Ryutuki. Two things I need to point out. Please take a look at those two peaks. I need to explain why they are creating a problem. The Ryutuki does not have an octave key. To be able to play a D sharp six, the performer will finger the pitch an octave lower, the D sharp five, but will increase the air flow to be able to produce the D sharp six. What I'm showing you here is the D sharp five, which is interfering with the sound of the D-sharp-6. I also want to show you this. This is noise, because you, the performer needs to increase the airflow, and it's a, a noise that will also disturb the sound. And I would like to play them for you so that you can compare. So here's the sound of the flute, Western flute. Here's Ryutuki. Tuning is the uh, uh, Western flute tune 440, uh, Western uh, Japanese flute 430. is not out of tune, it's just a different uh, 10 hertz. We can hear 10 hertz, you just heard 10 hertz difference. I will continue. I would like now to compare uh, 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 in blue Western oboe with red the Ichiriki, playing an octave lower, the D sharp 5. Okay, oboe does not use the vibrato of the flute. Look at the peaks even more thin, very, very precise sound. Compare with the Ichiriki. Look at the width of those peaks. That is very, it means a very, very fluctuating sound. That's what it suggests. You need to know, without changing the finger, just by moving the instrument in and out in the mouth, you can change the pitch up to a major six. Uh, in music, major six, it's very, very large interval. And that is to say, you know, like even when I play, you know, I don't play like a machine, you know, I play, mm -hmm, and in a little motion like that, the pitch is moving. Now, this is what is the beauty of the sound of the uh, Ichiriki, but you will see the consequence of that in two seconds. So I would like first to show you the oboe. Ichiriki, oh, Ichiriki, notice the attack. Mm -hmm. It's going to go with the typical gliss, because you move the instrument inside of the mouth, the pitch goes without changing fingers, please notice. Okay, so when we put them together, that's when it's difficult. i show you. Here on the top is the Western instruments, flute and oboe put together. The bottom is the Japanese instruments. You need to know, in acoustics, we say tones blend better when more of their peaks are coincide well when they are superimposed. So please take a look. Do you see the oboe and the flute? When they are one on top of another, they are very, very well focused. It suggests, oh, this is going to blend quite well. Uh, compare with the, uh, uh, I want to show you. 
here is the, the noise of the Ryuteki that will create some problem when you to mix them, and the width of the uh, of the Ichiriki will also create some problem. So I would like to play for you. Now you're gonna hear octave, oboe, and flute, D sharp five, D sharp six. And the, for you to listen is, do I hear them together? Flute, always, if I want the flute to come out, is vibrato, because flute disappears very easily. I play again. Until the vibrato, it's very, very good. Uh, now I will play Japanese instrument. <coughs> very difficult for the instruments to merge. I played last time. I would like now to talk about heterophony. Um, heterophony <laughs> is when you have the same melody but played with different rhythms. And this is typical technique in Kangan music. And so I would like to show you, first of all, oh, oh this is only the first phrase of section B of Itanaraku. Please notice. The, the, this is the melody, so Ichiriki and Ryuteki start together. I have used color, so yellow is for always the same pitch, yes? And they are one on top of another, so it plays together. Please take a look at the very naive uh, uh, animation I did for second measure, so it will explain how they break apart. Please take a look. This is clear for everybody? So, so here they... they Typical of Kengen music, they are together, uh, they are no more together, they are back together. No more together, back together <laughs> is Kengen music. Now in psychoacoustic, we say, our ability to hear separate part increases when instruments are not rhythmically in phase. So if they are, even merge for first measure, whoop, second measure, they separate, they go back third measure, and, and so on. I will play this for you, but in two seconds. I will first make a wrap up, and then I would like to talk about listening to Kengen music, uh, uh, just in a little bit more detail. And then I will, I will make, a, uh, I will play some music for you. Oh, so now first wrap up. So what we saw is that the Japanese concept of time presents a dichotomy. Its overall structure, because its emphasis on the present, gives an impression of slowness. Thanks to Manaru and Joaquin, though, each the the, the 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 temporal fabric of each moment is dynamic and multidimensional. And we saw the same dichotomy at the timbre level. We, we, the fact that the orchestra uh, instrumental functions are fixed, and the fact that there is no melodic, harmonic, rhythmic, dynamic, or orchestral changes, variation, we have the impression of a monochromic music, which gives an impression of stillness. On the other hand, because the eight instruments do not merge, do not melt, we have a very, very dynamic and rich uh, 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 texture. I'm now going to start the last phase of the presentation, and now I'm going to talk to you about the dilemma, or the uh, question that we had to face as a Western composer. The first one is, okay, so now, how does this research affect our listening of this music? And I need to talk about that. Question number two, how did this music affect our composing? And I will give you one example. So I will start, how did this music affect our listening? So since this is a music that focused on the present, we were able to say in English, this is music that we need to listen for what it is and not for what it will become. Okay, so that we can say in English, but <laughs> so what do we do with this? You know, like how do we experience that? And our impression or our belief is that you have to listen for the, the correlation between time and timbre, because that is where is the beauty of this music. That is our impression. And so I'm going, I have prepared uh, for you to listen to section A and section B of, uh, but first I need to sh give you some ideas of how time and timbre re are, are involved in those two phrases. So bear with me, I have just a little bit of analysis to do. Composer, you cannot <laughs> have a presentation with a composer without you know, dissecting things and uh, this is what's <laughs> happening now, sorry. Guys. Okay, so what you have in front of you is the melody of section A of Etanaraku. So, uh, uh, each, you may remember that we have three sections, A, B, and C. They are all composed of two <coughs> phrases of four measures. Now, I would like to show you the structure, rhythmic structure, of the first phrase, which is typical of Kengen. It is composed of two, me two measures of melodic motion. I've always used blue, followed by two measures of 
melodic breath I've always used orange to illustrate that. This piece is an E Dorian or in Yojo, and E is the tonic. And so you can see here, uh, when we get to the measure three and four, we are uh, on the pitch the tonic. It's a very, very modest uh, ornamentation with the tone to seven back to two one. It's clear? Please take a look at the second phrase, same, same thing. We have two measures of uh, at rhythmic activity followed with, with again, uh, two measures of melodic rest. Now to that, I would like to superimpose the metric structure. You may remember that I said the taiko, the suspended drum, its role is to articulate the most important downbeat in each of the phrases. I will show you. Here they are. This is the most important downbeat in the, uh, in the measure. It is called the obachi, and it is also the most important one and the only one where the three percussion instruments meet on a downbeat in, in the entire phrase, only once. Please notice the kakko will have a kind of a joa Q structure that will lead into that downbeat and put a, an emphasis on it. Now what is interesting here, please take a look. This obachi is also in phase with the change of melodic uh, uh, structure. So we have two measures of melodic uh, motion, boom, two measures of melod melodic rest. Two measures of melodic motion, boom, we rest. I'm just, and now I will in two seconds compare with section B. Before I do that, I need to talk to you about the melodic shape that is in this music, in this phrase. It starts with scale degree one, the tonic, and please note it's very, very important, not on down beat, on beat number three. Then it goes down the fourth to the dominant, scale degree five, and then goes back to the tonic, ah, this time, in phase with the obachi, on the down beat. The same gesture will be repeated, but the opposite. Second phrase, Start again with scale degree one, not on beat one, on beat three. It will go up to scale degree four this time, or go up or four, and then come down to scale degree one in phase with the obachi. So we have that wave, the sinus wave. We go tonic, dominant, tonic, predominant, tonic, this is what we get. This phrase structure, when we go to B, is going to totally be squeezed from two phrases to only one, and it's going to be transposed on the dominant. Please look at this. Fives, that's the dominant, go down the fourth to scale degree two, go back to uh, uh, the, 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 the dominant, go up to scale degree one. The exact same shape, but it has been now compressed in one phrase instead of two phrases. And this melodic compression will have a consequence on the phrase structure, and I'll show in two seconds. Just for you to finish, this motion is then repeated a second time to complete the section B of Eten Raku. Now, take a look what's the, the consequence. We start with two measures of activity, and we should expect now uh, two measures of rest, but now music is accelerated. We get two more measures of activity. And the last phrase then go with two measures of activity, and finally, the rest. Okay, I need to, to, I need to explain. If we are in the concert hall, I'm going to hear this macro rhythm. Action to measure, boom, rest to measure. Action to measure, boom, rest to measure. This macro rhythm, I hear it four times because section A is repeated twice. And then I get to section B and I get to measure action, to measure action, to measure action, boom, to measure relaxation. In section B, oh, things opens up. And this is, this is what I listen for, one example of what we listen for and I can stay focused on the music. And I would like to play it for you. If I make rec one recommendation, uh, try to breathe with the music. So, so, so when it so it goes, uh, boom. <laughs> try like this, and then when it comes to B, now you can appreciate. I will play only once A, only once B. Uh, let me show you. Please take a look. I, I did this for B, so you can also hear. The, the, the in measure two, uh, and notice how uh, very important, because here is where it breaks apart. Here's where I expect a point of relaxation, but here it says don't expect, it's breaking apart. And so it will take four more measures before we can relax. <laughs> I, will play, I will play for you now.
how this music affected our composing. So I'm a traditional composer, I write acoustical music, so after this research, I wrote a piece for um, piano trio and show. Yarek is a, a multimedia artist, so uh, what he created rather is his own gagaku. But to the eight layers, he added one more layers, but the visual layer, the video. And the structure of the video is a microcosm of gagaku. I will play for you this nine minute video. The structure, the overall structure, very, very static. If you only look at that, no fun. But if you look inside, what you pay attention to what you see in relationship with the sound, either or not synchronized, there is where is the magic of the, uh, of the piece. And I, I would like to play for you this, uh, this video now.
too, too late for a question? Or do you think? Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Lou. It was fascinating. Thank you very much. Um, is there any question? Um, I, I think I saw the gentleman's face. Um, hi. Uh, thanks for a fascinating talk. Um, I wonder if there, uh, I wonder if you, uh, as you know, John Cage was really interested in uh, silence and talked about it in, in many ways and explored it in his music. Uh, and he was also uh, interested in uh, ideas that came from the East, particularly Zen Buddhism. But I've never heard of any direct historical connection between the concept of Ma and Cage's concept of silence. Or uh, I wonder if you can reflect on that, if you know of any, or even conceptual connections, if not history. I think in, in the West we do have ma, but we call it timing. For us it's a much, much more, uh, um, it is not a concept. You know, ma, if you ask a professor about ma, oh, it's going to be reflective, you know, uh, it's going to be something profound, and it's something almost unexplainable, because it's something that you have to feel. In the West, we are much more two plus two equals four. So you can talk of your, of your professor and, and you, they can talk about timing. So we have a different approach. Uh, but it was uh, Tera Uchi-san yesterday, Tera san pardon. Tera san yesterday talked about it at a presentation and she, because she's teaching no and uh, here in Singapore and very important ma. So what she, she does it with the breathing. So uh, she had like three different types of breathing that so she, although she cannot explain what is ma, but if she says, here you do, hmm, <laughs> well, you did it better than I do now. But so, so this was one way that uh, Japanese can also talk about it. But uh, I, I studied at UC San Diego, and uh, Professor Joji Yuasa was, uh, and when we would ask him about questions like that, oh, that is very difficult, is what the answer we would be getting. So, so this is a, almost like a concept that you, you develop as a, a very interna internalized. So, 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 uh, so we have a different approach uh, uh, about that. But I don't think that we have none of it. But we don't have all this envelope about it, which I, I must say I like a lot. Uh, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. When you played us the extract from Etenlak, oui. in the uh, Etenlak, I couldn't hear the koto. Was it there? Oh, at the very first phrase? All along. I was looking and he listening. So it must be there. It was there. It was, it, was there. There. Yeah. it was not there, maybe the first phrase, because I started the B section mm -hmm. and no, you no, I skipped later it. on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I need okay. to In the B it. section? Yeah. No, we cannot hear. Because you. Okay, I have to say something that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did not want, because you know, I didn't want to bombard you with. Uh, but, okay, you know, when I said, you know, like you can breathe and things like that, there's one more dimension. When the, the, the instrument changes from activity to rest, that's when the strings can come out. In the B section, they are not resting, they are active. We cannot hear the string. So this is one more uh, way that I can tell when I listen to oh, 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 something is going astray here because I should have my, the, the, the pattern of the, wood, the strings emerge when the, str the woodwinds are supposed to be at rest. And when I cannot hear the strings, it's usual. So in the B section, the first, we, don't, we cannot hear. I could hear Biwa, not Koto. Mm. So they actually don't play together. Do no, they are uh, one measure apart, uh, a few beats apart. So, so Maybe after I can play it. Hiroko-san. Thank you for a <coughs> fantastic composition. Have you, uh, my, uh, my question is, uh, have you ever applied it to, to different instrument uh, orchestration uh, other than Gagaku? Uh, are you talking about this piece or in general? Uh, that, that theory. Ah, yeah. I cannot, because oh. uh, because Western instruments are built in a way to merge. And yeah, so but uh, aside from the, 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 the you know the e e uh, instrument and the characteristics of the you know, the waves of the, the, the instrument, I, I think heterophony and the, the, the timbres can be uh, yes. used. Yes. The, yes. The, in the West, it's a common technique as well. I don't know if it comes from Japan, uh, that I don't know. But heterophony is, is a standard, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, very yes. common. Right. This particular. Your, your piano trio and show. As a show, yes. It's a piano trio. That's what, uh, so, so yes. After this project, uh, what I did was a piano trio and show. But you know, we were two composers working on that, and that is Yannick piece that I, my colleague. So this was not my composition. I did not play it. 
I'm not sure if I have answered the question. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll ask you first. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, Rick, Rick first. Sorry. Rick, very system. We'll have enough time for We'll make sure all the questions are answered. Um. I'm not sure if this is just my ignorance on the topic. I mean, I've studied some gagaku in Japan. Um, my focus has been on other things, and maybe somehow it got lost. But you brought it up early on, as, as everyone knows, ma and naru and johakyu. Well, I, of course, know ma and johakyu a lot. I'm not quite sure what you mean by the concept of naru. Naru? Yeah, I don't understand that. The, the idea of becoming? So, so, uh, yeah, well, I've never heard that as a really? concept. Is uh, it mentioned Akira, in Naruto a lot? I apologize. Akira. I don't know that. Yes, uh, I, I know. So, it. yeah, I know Naru means become, but I'm, yeah. I, don't, I just don't understand. Oh, it's, I don't know that it was necessarily uh, associated necessarily with music, but in terms of the Japanese culture, and, and that uh, there is a, an implication in the concept of time, that, that I can say yes. And I'm almost sure the source uh, is Akira Tamba. Tamba. I, I, I'm almost sure, Mr. Emmer, that it's in Akira Tamba that uh, where, where I got initiated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I never. I think that. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, please. Get your question. Please go ahead. No, I just had a question. This uh, mixing of the visual and the. Uh, Music. First of all, has he? Is this something he's done more than this one example? Oh yes. And, um, can you just say a little about that process? For example, does he film and then get inspired to do the music, or does he do? I mean, what's the? How does he put those together? Mm -hmm. Because so, they, they were quite wonderful together. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to understand the process. In process. fact, he came through the back door. Because uh, uh, one day he was waiting to, uh, to have a plane and put his camera and, and add that footage. <laughs> and, and, and so was just in love with it. And immediately, because you know, he understood the structure of Gagaku and we were doing their research, so, oh my God, you know, like I have a gold mine here. And so <laughs> then he began to manipulate it, manipulate it, and, mani and every time it looked like forced uh, kitsch. So, so, you know, like, oh, oh, so deconstruct, deconstruct. And at the end, he just used it pure. Huh. And so, uh, uh, but it's a, it's a it's a piece that has a lot of pitfall. For example, you know when the plane, and he goes with all of the instrument that sounds like most like a train. And uh, you know at the end, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, thank God that he did not put it as it start moving me. I mean, timing <laughs> would have been like just horrible. I mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and also the fact, you know, like he has this uh, uh, percussionist that go top, 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 and the flood is. You know, I remember we went to studio and we say, can you hold it the longest you can? And the guy would, and do you do this? When a flautist is going to play, you go, <gasps> like with the performer, yeah? So I would do this, and I would be out of breath, and you still, <laughs> and when you think it's finished, you have the second breath that's just, so this was not manipulated. What you heard, is, ah, ah. this is the performer who is dying, but still has breath uh, uh, coming out. And then, you know, like uh, another pitfall is that, you know, you have the music stop before. For the, the, so that uh, we're all uh, about. It's very inspired by Japanese. Uh, but but he so he filmed and then he composed. Yes, correct. And sometimes when he does this, he will edit the visual. Uh, this one you cannot. And what you could have done is not um, not on this one, but in other. Yes, examples. most of the time he will compose the own image, oh. and so that then he's the god, so he can do you know whatever with the with the image. But this one is a uh, you could superimpose thing on top of it, and then. It, that's why it, it just became uh, uh, empty like this. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Can I make? I forgot to write the website because we, we created the website. And so, and to give you the www, I always forget them. So you can just Google Gagaku Project. And that will give you the website. And, and we are very fortunate because it has now been translated in Japanese, in Spanish, in French, and in, in English. And so, so, uh, so if you want to, uh, I, I hope maybe you will enjoy. And this is the orchestra that we've worked with. Next time you are in Tokyo, please go listen for their concerts. Uh, they are just, just fantastic uh, ensemble. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much.